Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, I'm Joe. 2D tile map is a powerful tool that provides you with a simple way to create two-dimensional environments based on a grid layout. In my previous episode, we are familiar with the essential workflows on isometric tile map on Unity. Although it's fast and easy, painting individual tiles with the tile map can be quite repetitive at times, especially if we want to make changes to a lot of tiles. Today, we'll have a look at how to use isometric rule tile assets to define a series of rules on a tile and create a smart tile that adapts to surrounding tiles as we paint in our scene. Let's create one Unity 2D project. In this tutorial, we'll continue to use the Swipes folder. You can download the resource folder from the description below. First thing first, drag the resource folder into our project. Today, we are going to make one dessert level in our scene. We need one folder to save our tile palette. Also, we need two folders to save our tiles and prefabs. To create a tile, simply right-click anywhere in the project, go to Create, and select a tile, and save the new tile in our Tiles folder. Then, we can drag and drop one sprite to this tile, and drag this tile assets to one new palette. This is our previous way of creating tile on one palette. Well, it spends so much time when we are painting our level. We have to select correct tile to match with each edge of the ground. So, we will use rule tile today. The rule tile allows you to set rules regarding which tile get painted down, depending on the other tiles adjacent to the tile you are placing. However, we don't find the rule tile selection. How can we get it? We can Google the keyword Unity 2D Extra Rule Tile. You will find one Unity Technology GitHub. The rule tile assets can be founded as a part of 2D Extra Pack. This pack is set of custom scripts and behaviors for use with the 2D tile map feature set. We can download this folder and unzip it. Drag and drop the tile map folder to our Unity project. That's pretty much all we need to do for setup. Actually, we don't really care about the fields inside of this folder. We can right click anywhere in the project, go to create and find tiles. Now you can select the types of tiles you wish to use. Today, we will talk about two tiles isometric rule tile and the random tile. Select isometric rule tile, we can call this tile dessert ground rule tile. Let's create one new palette for our rule tile. Select create new palette. Choose to the isometric option and keep the menu default custom cell size value. Press the Create button and save this new palette. We can edit our rule tile now. You can select one default sprite for the rule tile and each of our tile sprites we would like to define our rules. Press the Unlock button and focus on the rule tile inspector. We obey the crosswise to define each rule. The order starts from the top left corner. We can select inside the grid sections to define the rule for each sprite in a tile. A cross in the grid dedicates that this is the hard edges and an arrow defines a continuation of the tile. Generally, it's best to place a cross on the edge of the tile and then arrows in one or two main directions the tile continues from, leaving the rest of the grid blank. Think about it, if these tiles appear on the scene, we don't want anything else tile generated on his this position, while his other surrounding area can fill with other tiles. According to the clockwise order, the second tile sprite is our this sprite. We can use the same methods to set up, if something order is wrong, you can of course always drag one of the rules and change their order. It's worth experimenting with this to get the best layout for your tile set. You may also need to rearrange or move tiles up and down in the list 
to change the priority for the layout. The next sprite should be the corner of the ground. According to the clockwise order, should start from the top left corner. As we add rules to the list, let's drag the root tile from the project window into our palette. For easy to select this root tile, we can go to the palette prefab mode and change the tile anchor to 0, 0, 0. Change to the individual mode. something did not work. We can erase this root tile and drag again. This time, we need to change the tile anchor to 1, 1, 0. We can see that the tiles we painted adapt to the surrounding tiles based on the rules we are setting is better. As you can see, once a root tile is set up, it's extremely flexible and even easier to lay out our levels in 2D. We can define another rules for our elevated areas tiles. Create another isometric tile map and set the sorting layer order to 2. Then create one root tile in the project window. For this time, we can quick set up our new root tile as our previous option. According to the clockwise direction, using across and arrows to place them in main directions and leaving the rest of the grid blank. Now, drag the root tile to our palette window making sure the active tile map is the level tile map. Now we can use the pen tool to paint our elevated tile map area. But it's not looking very nature yet. The first reason is that we need to change to the individual mode. Chunk mode is effective at reducing the performance cost of tile map, but it will not be able to dynamically sort behind and in front of other objects. The second reason is that we have to go to project settings to sort tiles based on height, change the transparent sort mode to custom, and set the transparent sort access value to 0, 1, 0. Perfect. Root tiles can save your work by defining rules and help you easily lay out levels in our 2D game. You may notice that we set the ground sorting layer to 0, while the level tile map sorting layer order is 2, because we can create another isometric tile map called 
Guang detail tile map, and his sorting layer is 1. We can create another simple rule tile. Additional, let's have a quick look at the random tile. We can set the number of the sprites to 4 and drag 4 sprites to their positions. Then, drag the random tile to the palette window and you can paint the random tile on your game. Instead of selecting each tile from palette window, now we can place random tiles onto a tile map. Now we have added one player to our game. In here, I set the sorting layer to 5 and added the Ridge Body component and Cycle Collider 2D component. Changing the gravity force to 0. Define the shape of our player physical collisions. Also, attaching one simple player movement script to our game object. By the way, I have changed this game object tag as player, because our camera will follow his position component later. If you want to know the detailed code explanation of the 2D movement, you can watch my isometric tile map episode or camera controller episode. Go to camera, you can drag the camera size slider to adjust the camera view. Also, I have attached the camera controller script to follow our player. When we press play, our player is working onto the area directly because we did not add collisions on here. If you have know how to add the collision on tile map, you can skip to this timeline, or you can spend a couple of minutes to follow my steps. Once we have placed our collisions tiles, we can add a tile map 2D collider component to the collider tile map. It will auto generate colliders for each individual tile based on the shape of the sprites. For better performance, we can also add a composite collider 2D component and make sure to tick used by composite on our tile map collider. This unifies all of the individual colliders into one big shape. Don't forget to change the rigid body component body type to kinematic. Now, when we press play, our player seems to work much nature in our dessert level now.
Adding decorations to the levels is quite simple. You can edit manually place the decoration sprites at any desired point in the scene. Or you can attach the decorations to the tile map grid by making them into individual tiles. You can decide which approach works best for your case. In this tutorial, I choose to manually place some decorations around the level. We can simply drag the tree to our game and add one collider, making sure the trees and the character has the same order in sorting layer, allowing character to sort behind and in front of the tree dynamically. Hold command or control button and change some of them its size and color. Just looks more natural and diverse. We can see in our folder we have several scattered sprites and we have to combine these sprites into one group and save them as a prefab. If you don't want to see the Collider tile map material appear when we are in play mode, you can simply create one C-sharp script to disable the tile map render component in the beginning, just making sure you are using the tile map namespace. Alright, this is the end of this video. In the next video, I will publish the whole process of making tile map with isometric root tile. I hope this tutorial can enhance your experience using isometric root tile. Stay tuned for future updates from my channel. For more videos about Unity tutorial, Adobe Illustrator, Photoshop, and game design, you can click my profile and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.